In truth, the obsession with colonizing Mars is not something new. This concept actually started gaining traction during the last century with several projects created by talented and ambitious individuals working under NASA, sharing the end goal of a crewed mission to Mars. Things started to kick off especially after the Apollo 11 event in 1969, when the US became the first country to send humans to the moon. With this feat, NASA became more confident in its capability to reach destinations beyond the moon, specifically Mars. However, no colonization effort of any sort on the Red Planet has been carried out so far. So what exactly happened to stunt the progress of these long-forgotten projects? And can SpaceX's Starship provide NASA the extra oomph it needs to accomplish its unfulfilled dreams? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Werner von Braun, one of the most important important rocket developers and champion of space exploration in the 20th century. Maybe you've heard of him. While serving in the Nazi rocket development program, he helped design and co-develop the V-2 rocket, the first man-made object to travel into space on June 20th of 1944. That was during World War II. Surprise, surprise. However, von Braun was more passionate about space travel than creating weapons to kill people in war, and that led him to secretly moving to the United States. In 1945, he signed a contract with the United States Army Ordnance Corps and later worked for the medium-range ballistic missile program. That is where Braun's dream of reaching the stars flew further and inspired the next generation. In 1948, he published a book named Mars Project, which probably became the most influential book on the subject of the manned Mars mission in its era and even for the next century. Referring to the content of the book, Although it is considered science fiction, Braun has provided detailed calculations to support his theory, and you can see that many ideas in the novel have been used by not only NASA for its later programs, it's also being used by modern private space companies, like SpaceX. For example, to serve the Mars journey, the book mentions a number of necessary vehicles, including transport ships, cargo vehicles, fully reusable space planes, booster systems, and and the Mars lander. In particular, the idea of a vehicle returning to Earth after launch motivated NASA to build a reusable space shuttle. According to Braun's design, the ships will be equipped with liquid fuel rocket engines with hypergolic propellants commonly found in today's engines, especially the Draco engine of SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. He also noted the effects of weightlessness on the human body, radiation from the sun, and cosmic rays, hence the need of spacesuits to move from one ship to another. Despite being ahead of his time, he was wrong about the possibility of alien life on Mars. But can you really blame him? I mean, the public knowledge about Mars back then was quite limited. In fact, the atmospheric pressure there is more than a hundred times lower than Earth's, not to mention a number of other disadvantages that make it a dead planet. Indeed, no living creature can survive in such conditions, while vehicles will face many difficulties if they wish to land on Mars. For that reason alone, the lander in his imagination cannot actually operate in space. However, this is not the end of the conquest for Mars. Fast forward to 1950, Braun's colleague, Dr. Ernst Stullinger, came up with a new proposal based on Braun's ideas. At that time, America was on the threshold of the atomic age and nuclear energy began to be applied to missiles. Not only is it possible to use in manned missions, but but nuclear power also provides greater efficiency at much lower mass, helping to shorten transportation times. Additionally, it's capable of generating electrical power once on Mars. Like other contemporary scientists, Dr. Stillinger, a colleague of Von Braun, was interested in the idea of a nuclear rocket engine. Stillinger's vehicle is fundamentally much like Braun's, except for the fact that it will run on nuclear-powered electricity. And what's more, he also upgraded the Mars lander, given that instead of landing as a glider through the Martian atmosphere as proposed by Braun, Stillinger's vehicle would land vertically with the help of a parachute above, and then the main rocket motor would be at the bottom. Before touching down on the surface of Mars, the motors will fire a landing shot and slow down for a soft landing. This technique is clearly more effective than the glider solution, so it was later learned and used by NASA for its recent Mars landing 
lander, followed by SpaceX for its Falcon 9 rocket. But his innovation led to another challenge, it, which took a long time. Specifically, it took 13 months to make a complete trip from Earth to Mars. Spending more than a year inside a spaceship floating in space just to get to a place that we don't even know what will happen is inherently risky. It can be said then with certainty that both Braun and Stollinger were pioneers in proposing concept studies for a crewed mission to Mars. Thanks to that, in the 1960s, the world witnessed an explosion of new and more practical ideas, not only from individuals, but also from entire organizations. In 1962, the Empire Research Project, which involved the exploration of Mars, was commissioned by NASA to three companies, Ford's Aeronautics Division, General Dynamics, and the Lockheed Missiles and Space Company. These companies had to propose detailed ideas of their own. Despite being different with the plan, expenditure, and time, all of them had the common point to suggest the Saturn V rocket and a nuclear engine addition. Unfortunately, none of these projects have ever been funded, but they are considered the first detailed analyses of what it would take to complete a human mission to Mars, using data from actual NASA spaceflight, laying the foundation for future research. Upon the ushering of 1969, the United States marked a new milestone when it first sent humans to the moon as part of the Apollo 11 program against its longtime competitor, Russia. This success pushed NASA further toward goals beyond Apollo. Von Braun later advocated a crewed mission to Mars as a focus for NASA's crewed space program. He proposed two six-crew spacecraft that would be powered by Nerva rocket engines and launched with Saturn V thrusters on a dual mission in the early 80s. The Saturn design evolved from the Jupiter series rockets, which had been created and experimented with by Von Braun's team. Between 1960 and 1962, the Marshall Space Flight Center designed a series of Saturn rockets that could be deployed for various Earth orbit or lunar missions. NERVA, or the Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application, was a nuclear thermal rocket engine development program that ran for roughly two decades. Its principal objective was to establish a technology base for nuclear rocket engine systems to be utilized in the design and development of propulsion systems for space mission application. It promised to be more effective than chemical ones. The original aim of this program was to provide a nuclear-powered upper stage for the United States Air Force intercontinental ballistic missiles. After the formation of NASA in 1958, it was reoriented as, as a civilian project to produce a nuclear-powered upper stage for NASA's Saturn V moon rocket. In addition to continuing development of the Saturn V and NERVA, his plan included a manned space shuttle in its original form in 1975 and space stations, but it lacked one type of hardware specifically the Mars lander, commonly seen in space missions today. The appeal of this setup is the mention of the space station module as a habitat for the long journey to Mars, the Saturn V rocket as an efficient transport vehicle since it performed successfully during Apollo 11, and the Nerva nuclear engine, then qualified to launch to the ground. According to the project schedule, testing would have begun in 1978 with the first Mars mission in 1982. The shuttle would be used to refurbish the Mars production space to build a space station that had a capacity of 50 people in 1989. But much like the three proposals by the three companies prior, Von Braun's project could not escape the fate of remaining only on paper due to political reasons. In the early 70s, the Vietnam War made a massive dent in the U.S.'s budget. Americans were fed up with the way D.C. was throwing not only their tax dollars, but also their loved ones into a war that served no purpose. Their biggest concern then was no longer the extremely expensive space exploration missions, which are estimated at up to $32 billion or $250 billion in today's money. Additionally, President Nixon was not someone who cared much about NASA and its projects. Evidently, by the end of his administration in 74, NASA's budget had plummeted from 
more percent of the federal budget to less than a percent. As a result, the majority of NASA's programs focused on the Moon and Mars were canceled and instead aimed at low Earth orbit despite Von Braun's tireless efforts to keep his passionate Mars project alive. Fortunately, things changed when in 2004, then-President George W. Bush announced that the government would again focus on NASA targets beyond LEO. We will give NASA a new focus and vision for future exploration. We will build new ships to carry man forward into the universe to gain a new foothold on the moon. As a result, there have been a number of programs aimed at the moon and Mars, such as NASA's Constellation Program in 2004, the Journey to Mars Initiative in 2010, and recently, the Artemis Program. However, under each new presidential period, those projects continuously face the challenge of being canceled, reoriented, or delayed. So, in this century, NASA has not yet done any crewed landing missions so far onto the moon, let alone on Mars. This has greatly disappointed public opinion. On the other hand, the emergence of private companies led by ambitious leaders like the Elon Musk-led SpaceX could be a game changer. Musk is pursuing the dream of a self-sufficient city on Mars and a multi-planetary life. More interestingly, his super-powerful rocket, the Starship, is capable of surpassing all other rockets in sheer power, payload capacity, and modern features. And its construction speed is a heck of a lot faster than processing paperwork at some government agencies, such as the FWS. Starship is now under development and still waiting for the launch license for the second test flight in 2024. But with the tireless efforts of both Elon Musk and his talented colleagues, the public has raised hope that Starship will soon fulfill the dream of reaching Mars, which was sadly halted during the last century. And that's all for today, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.